the Chicago public school system is having a tough time. But there are some people out there who say the students are to blame. In Chicago, there's no incentive for kids to go to school. They would rather make money selling drugs and guns. Okay, angry news lady. But you know what? Let's hear from a recent graduate. I am donating $1 million to CPS. That's Chance the Rapper. You know the dude with the Kit Kat commercials and the Super Mario overalls? So why is this guy giving his hard-earned candy money to a public school system? Well, according to writer and sociologist Eve Ewing, the problem is that many people have abandoned that system altogether. Even though Chicago as a city is about a third white, white residents in the city are by and large opting out of the public school system. Well, you know, strong black women, we can figure this out. Well, that's part of the problem though, right? Is that like when people like Chance step up and say, I'm gonna give all this money to try to fix the schools, that's awesome, but at the same time, he shouldn't have to do that as a private citizen, right? Public schools are supposed to be for everybody. They're supposed to be supported by a public. Yeah, America don't work that way. I know, it's a bummer. That's one way to put it. And Chance and Eve would know. They both went to Chicago public schools, but they share something else in common. As students, they had some outside help from Young Chicago Authors, a nonprofit after-school writing program. So I sat down with poet and artistic director Kevin Koval to find out more about YCF. We believe that young people are the best documenters and the best experts of their own experience, and that as a civic society, we should probably be paying attention uh, more closely to what young people are saying. Ooh, that sounds exhausting. Yeah, but they're great, though. But they're, they're, I mean, they're so smart and they're so talented. They better so, be. Yeah, no, it really is. And young people are actually very hip, very savvy. They constantly make these brilliant, acute uh, political insights into, into the way our society should be. And, you know, in some ways, it becomes the adult bureaucracies that we create that become the problem. Yeah, you're definitely a poet. You just said a lot of words I to me. <laughs> they sounded so good. Okay, that's good. I don't know what all of them meant. All right, I'm not sure. But I'm, I'm I not am either. so <laughs> impressed. Okay. Okay, a place where kids learn how to find their own voice is cool. And YCA's annual youth poetry competition, Louder Than a Bomb, is the largest in the world. I just had one problem. We, we run the longest running youth open mic in, in the world. Open mics? Open mics? Those things where people get on stage and speak a bunch of bull Hey, white man, come out of your shell. Hey, white man, don't kiss your cousin and tell. Check my privilege. And then Order. it's been three hours, and I've heard the same poem. So... All of them like super dope, though. I guarantee if you are here, you will have a good time. Kevin really had me with his big words and beautiful eyes. But these open mics? Man, I don't know. I guess it was time for me to meet one of these little YCA kids. So I headed down to Chicago Southside, where I met 17-year-old Trey. Trey claims YCA has helped him develop as a poet. I'll be the judge of that. Have you written any, uh, like, love poems for, like, you know, somebody you like? I have. Eh? I wrote my first love poem as a sophomore. Ooh, did you give it to him? I read it to her. <gasps> did you do a real, like, Romeo or Juliet stand on this balcony and I read to you situation? Um, if the balcony was a stage. <gasps> you performed it at Redisor? Performed it. Guys, the balls on this young man. There's dudes that won't even text me back. And a 17-year-old is out here getting you in these streets. <laughs> Step your game up, gentlemen. On top of everything else, YCA taught this kid how to play the game of love. Damn. I think YCA has really helped me uh, kind of realize who I am, not just as an artist, uh, but as a person in general. It just gives you a chance to um, speak your truth. OK, so I mean, are you going to this open mic tonight? Yes. I, matter of fact, I'll be performing. Oh. And you know what will make my day? What? I would love if you came. Ugh, this baby-faced poet's really gonna have me going to the one thing I can't stand? All right, I'll make you a deal. I will come to the open mic. But you gotta win. Uh, there's not really a winner. Listen, there's always winners. Trey, right? because you've been to the open mic, you've seen losers before. Thank, thank you. Okay, look, I gotta go. I'm gonna go. Okay. Th there okay, are no winners. Class. I'll see you. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Okay. We win it. There are no winners. Winning! Bow, 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 bow. That night I showed up looking amazing, as usual. But I gotta say, when Trey went up on stage, I was nervous as hell. The following is a letter to poetry to earn my spot at the table. Dear poetry, <laughs> baby girl, you are fine. <laughs> but I've been thinking, if we plan it right and put space in between our stances, we could be stars. But what do you know? 
about a man who's been macking with verses back from a curse. He chatted with first, relaxed up in church, the magic of church, the trap muse, the gospel of rap, the hostile and cast the back pew. The courage never developed the fellas to ask you, like, what is your castle like? Who are you attracted to? I didn't need to be nervous. Trey and the other performers killed it. And instead of treating these kids like a bunch of hoodlums who don't care about school, maybe we should be helping them develop their voice, just like YCA does. Oh, and I guess I was wrong about open mics too. There's at least one of them that doesn't suck. Thank you.